Boeing versus Airbus. There's no bigger rivalry in aviation. America versus Europe, hub to hub versus point to point, and in this video, automation emphasis versus pilot authority. Who wins? Why have the two big manufacturers gone down such different paths? And how will the philosophies develop into the future? Let's begin with Airbus. They're the big European manufacturer, probably most famous for the Airbus A380, the king of the skies. If you've ever seen inside an Airbus cockpit, you've probably noticed the lack of one big thing, the control column. Airbus pilots have the luxury of acres of legroom and a virtually unprecedented luxury for pilots, a tray table. They have all this because the Airbus version of a control column is the side stick. But its position isn't the only peculiar thing about it. All Airbus flight controls are fly-by-wire. Instead of the side stick directly linking to the movement of the control surfaces, all it does is send electric signals to a computer. It then decides how it will go about executing the requested maneuver, and if it'll even allow it at all. So, if Bob yanks on the stick too much, risking a stall, or thinks he's maverick and turns too steeply, computer will say no, based at least on its normal law. It simply won't move the control surfaces in the way he requests. Airbus has a bunch of critical operation limits which it won't normally exceed. All of the side stick tricks are probably worth a whole other video. But this is just one example of Airbus's emphasis on automation. When a failure occurs, Airbus's ECAM will not only tell the pilots what's gone wrong, but automatically show them the most appropriate checklist each line disappearing as each step is completed. Gone is the need for a paper QRH. Pilots can step through a checklist as basic as the shutdown drills or as critical as an engine fire with the click of a button. Airbus as a whole puts trust in its automation. It sees pilots more as system managers rather than hands-on aviators, allowing them to maintain high-level situational awareness while they monitor and manage the aircraft effectively. Boeing, meanwhile, does things a little differently. Creator of the iconic Queen of the Skies and the pride of US aviation, it does everything it can to make modern day pilots still feel like pilots. All Boeing aircraft stick with its tried and tested yoke as its steering wheel, showing how clearly it aims to maintain the crucial connection between the pilots and the aircraft. And unlike Airbus, it still physically connects the two yokes as well. So if Bob turns into some sort of Manfred von Richthofen, over-controlling from the right-hand seat, the pilot beside him can feel his control movements intuitively, likely before they even see them. Boeing's emphasis on planes for pilots can be seen on something as simple as the design of a button. While Airbus religiously maintains the dark cockpit concept, in Boeing's, the traditional push button on and off lights still come as standard. And when something goes wrong, Boeing won't overwhelm you and it won't jump to conclusions. It'll simply alert you through the ECAS. What occurs from there is up to the pilots. On modern aircraft, they can access the checklist electronically, but only after requesting it. So where's all this going? And who wins? Well, ask an Airbus pilot and they'll tell you that automation is king, while a Boeing aviator probably won't believe all the hype. Their plane flies like a plane. The truth is, there's no one right answer when it comes to cockpit or aircraft design. What does matter is ergonomics, designing planes to suit humans rather than humans molding to a plane. Seeing just how animated the flying community can get defending their metal, some of whom might not be bots, I think both Boeing and Airbus go just fine. But let me ask what you think. Would you prefer a slick new Airbus A350 or a tried and tested Boeing 777? Let me know in the comments below. As for the future, if anything, we're actually starting to see the philosophies merge. Boeing introduced fly-by-wire way back with the 777, but rather than fully committing like Airbus, it mimics the way a traditional plane flies as much as it can, with artificial speed stability and flight envelope protections that are there but can be exceeded if the pilot tries hard enough. Looking into the future, both sides will likely innovate and change. After all, 
that's one of the attractions of buying new aircraft. However, you can be sure that the age-old design concepts will remain for a while yet, fueling the rivalry that we love to hype, but love equally.